Akron Athletics and the Wentz Financial Group present Zips Weekly with John Gross. Contributing sponsors, Hilton, Akron Fairlawn, Bryant, Heating and Cooling, and Regency Office Furniture. And now your host, Joe Dunn. Hello again, everyone. Welcome to a brand new edition of Zips Weekly with head basketball coach John Gross, brought to you all season long by Bud Wentz and everybody at the Wentz Financial Group. Well, believe it or not, we have come to the final week of college basketball for the regular season, which means the Zips have two more regular season games left. Tuesday night at home against Ball State, then Friday night, the big rivalry game up at Kent State, nationally televised. That'll be a 6 o'clock tip-off. And, Coach, right now we are 20-9, 12-4 in the conference, but I guess it's only appropriate we would finish the season with two of the best teams in the league. Yeah, we've had that type of yeah. schedule, haven't we, from the jump. And, by the way, where did all the time go? You know, flew by yeah, to get to right. this last week. We were talking about that off the air prior. Uh, but, yeah, no question about it. Two great teams this yeah. week, two of the best teams in the league. Uh, but our non-conference was set up that way. And then, you know, by randomized computer version, you know, we I think we'll end up playing, depending on how all this shakes out, you know, we play Kent twice, Toledo twice, Ball State yeah. twice, Ohio twice, you know, all the teams that are near uh, the top currently. And uh, But we don't apologize for that. We sure. like competition. We love challenges. And it's been uh, a challenging schedule that will hopefully continue to get us ready here as we start to approach March. Of course, in next week's show, we'll know exactly who we play in Cleveland, when we play, what time we play, and it's it's kind of hard to figure that out right now because there's some teams starting to play a lot better. It's hard to look at the standings and figure out exactly what's going to happen. No, it is, and obviously a lot of this in conference play, you know, we talk about who you're playing a lot, but it's when you play them, yeah. you know, do they have a guy out, do they not right. have a guy out, uh, did they just come off an emotional win, um, you know, did they did they lose a tight one maybe, and now they're angry, and now they're more motivated? Yeah. And I mean, it's a lot of this. You know how it's just the human element, which is what makes it always interesting and fun. Exactly. Well, the Zips had two games last week: a tough loss up at Toledo, then Saturday night at home, a big win over Western Michigan. So let's go back up to Savage Arena on the campus of Toledo University and watch highlights of that game against the Rockets and. Coach, I remember what you said after the game. Toledo played like an NBA team, especially in the yeah, second half. The way they shot the ball. And 63% won, in the second yeah, half. Yeah, they've won 13 in a row. They're on a roll right now. They've got good personnel. They're well coached. They shoot it well. Thought their defensive scheme was good in game two. And, you know, they played great that night. You know, they really did. Uh, give them credit. I think sometimes as coaches, you know, we owe it. Th here's the things we needed to do to give ourselves a better chance to win, to play better, to play well, um, and there were certainly some things, there's no doubt about it, but the biggest reason we got beat on Tuesday night was how well Toledo played, so, you know, give them, give them credit. We had wide open looks early in the game, Coach, I think Hankerson uh, and Nate Johnson had open look from the corner, I think uh, Castaneda had one from the top of the key, none of those go in, not that that would have determined the outcome of the game, but Boy, we started out pretty cold. Yeah, we did, and, and it ends up getting to 12-11 after that right. cold start, so yeah. we're right there. But, you know, I thought we aborted mission a little bit, meaning we had a game plan, and then when it got to 24-11, to we started to abort that and go uh, self a little bit on offense, a little bit too much hero ball. And then defensively, I thought we were glued to our man and didn't play team defense. And so that added insult to injury as Toledo played so exceptionally well. So uh, the game got away from us and uh, good, good lesson for our guys that you've got to stay the course. I thought our focus as we got punched in the mouth waned a little bit on Tuesday night. I think that gives us a chance to recenter and talk about, you know, hey, that's what happens in February and March. You know, I, I told him, I said, these teams that are at the top of the leagues, Joe, like Toledo, us, Kent, uh, Ohio, Ball State, if you look at their home records, it's like 50-something and four combined. Yeah. I mean, the good teams win at home for the most part in whatever league you're talking about. So, you know, no panic on our part. Obviously, we needed to be better. 
once again give you know Toledo a lot of credit for playing so well. You mentioned, Coach, we were right in. It was 15 to 11 early. Then uh, we got down 10, and finally at halftime was 37-24. And boy, the second half, as you mentioned, they just shot the lights out. 63%. They hit some tough shots. They did. It got away from us a little bit, but I'll give our guys credit. It got up to 32, and then we yeah. cut it down to like 15. I wasn't very happy about how we finished the last minute 50 to two minutes. We have a saying in our program, till zeros. And we just, we didn't play till zeros. We played from eight minutes. We shaved the 15 or whatever it was, 15 to 17 points off that deficit. And we were swinging and playing and, and uh, did a nice job there from about the eight minute mark, second half to about the two minute mark, 150. And then with minute 50 to go, I thought we, you know, kind of quit playing. So we were able to address that and, Hey, we don't want that just to be lip service that we say that we play till zeros and it sounds good. Like we're going to play till zeros. So I think it gave us a chance to learn there as well. Well, you get behind, Coach, and you can't trade baskets. You need some runs in there, and we got a nice run at the end of the game, but a little bit too late. Yeah, it was. Um, and our guys continue to play, again, especially during that eight-minute to two-minute stretch in the second half. Great pass there by Nate. We, we battled, and then we kind of let our foot off the gas the last minute 50, played the scoreboard, and that's not what we do. So those guys that were in had a chance to learn from that, as well as the guys that watched some of the video uh, post game. They're a tough team to defend, Coach. We mentioned last week uh, they have four pretty good scores in there. They have a, a big 6'7 kid that transferred in from Walsh, and I think he's one of the more underrated players in the league. Well, he's really good. I don't underrate him. I think he's a stud. He's good. Milner's good. Ray J. Dennis is good. Maddox is playing really well here lately. I mean, it's it, they're, they're playing well. Yeah. You know, they beat Buffalo by 30. You're right. After they, put, after they beat us and had us down big. So, you know, they've, uh, they're playing really well right now and obviously are ahead in the standings. Yep. Zips lose that one on the road, 84-63. We're going to take a break, come back, and talk about a totally different game, a nice Zips win against Western Michigan Saturday night at Rhodes Arena. So don't go away. We're back to watch those highlights right after this. The difference with Wentz Financial Group is that we do not have a cookie-cutter answer to any of our clients' needs. Every day is completely different in the market, and every client situation is unique. We value the opportunity and responsibility to manage the hopes and dreams of our 3,000 customers nationwide. Come see the difference Wentz Financial Group can make for your financial future. Wentz Financial Group, investment management for your lifetime. It takes attention to detail. With your local Bryant dealer, you're getting more than just a technician. You're getting someone who pays attention to your needs and the little things that make a big difference. It takes the dealer you can rely on. And to keep your family warm this winter, here, let me show you how this works. It takes Bryant. Bryant, whatever it takes. And to keep your family comfortable, it takes E.H. Roberts Heating and Cooling. Find them at ehroberts.com. Okay, welcome back to Zips Week. And the quick reminder highlights brought to you by Regency Office Furniture, one of our sponsors here on Zips Weekly. And Coach, a Western Michigan comes to town. They're not going to make Cleveland, which means they were kind of playing loose. And that kind of worried me a little bit because they went out and played hard early. Well, they did. And obviously, they've got really good personnel, starting with Lamar Norman, who led the league in scoring yep. last year and is one of the league leaders this year. But, you know, I was more concerned about where we were going to be at. Obviously, we did not have Greg Tribble, right. um, who's our best defender on the perimeter, uh, to guard Norman like he did in game one. Mm -hmm. Um, so he was out, which is an experienced veteran who's won a lot of games. And then we had a lot going on uh, with, with our team, in particular with Freeman, a lot of personal yeah. uh, family um, things that we were, uh, you know, that he was being uh, a, a ch a challenged with. And so he, uh, you know, doesn't get, get there till tip right before tip-off. And so now you're playing the game, and you wonder where you're going to be at emotionally and mentally. Sure. and. And uh, we had some younger guys really step up, Joe. I thought Tavari Johnson Excellent and Garvin game. Clark played around 20 minutes each off the bench and were absolutely terrific. Uh, Garvin was great defensively. I thought Tavari had one of his best defensive games of the year, was really good on offense, made three threes, had three assists and yep. two steals, and got great contributions from those two guys off the bench. And then Freeman got going in the second half, and then Castaneda was Castaneda. Yes. I thought Imani Lyles came in and gave you some energy, too, off the bench. Gave us a little boost. Yeah. Um, you know, he got to clean up a couple things. Was glad to get him in there. And then Kobe Mitchell, I thought, was solid as well mm -hmm. uh, coming off the bench. 
turn down an open three. I don't like yeah. to turn down open threes. I like to shoot them. Yes. Um, so he'll learn from that. But we're, you know, I, I thought it was good that we were able to get those three freshmen and the sophomore yep. in there um, and get them cranking a little bit here as we start to sure. approach March. Okay, let's go back to Rhodes Arena this past Saturday night. The Zips are going to win number 20 on the season against Western Michigan. Back and forth we go early in the game. Coach Castaneda, with, I think, with a baseline jumper. Nate Johnson with a nice drive to the hoop. And all of a sudden, uh, we're up by four about halfway through. But it's going to be close all the way through until the closing minutes of the first half. Yeah, I thought the difference in the game, Joe, you talked about it after the game when we spoke on radio was the end of the first half and the start of the yeah. second half. We went on monster runs, uh, and we take a lot of pride in starting and finishing halves. And I thought the difference in the game was the end of the first half right. and the start of the second half. That was the game. As we said, Castaneda playing well early. You see Tavari Johnson asked me after the game if he called that bank shot. He said new, but he knew it was going in as soon as it <laughs> left his hand. I said, well, how can you do both those things? But, boy, he's a great kid, and he's got a bright future. He does, yeah. Both both Johnsons played really well, did, a, did some great things for us. Great high-low there from Hankerson to Freeman. Um, free flow in there in offense. Great drive there uh, by Garvin. I, I, I thought we were pretty good offensively. Uh, our cutting wasn't great in the first half. I thought our uh, ti uh, the timeliness of the cuts, the velocity or pace of them were just okay. Um, I thought we stood a little bit when we passed. So we, we were okay in the first half. I thought we were a little better in the second half. There you see, we only had a three-point lead with about 3.42 to go in the half, and then we exploded. We got uh, a three from Hankerson, three-pointer from Tavari Johnson, and then uh, closed out strong the lead 35-25 at the half. Yeah, great read there by Johnson on the post gap. Uh, throwing it to Hankerson for the corner three. Great pass by Freeman here out of the post. As you know, Joe, from you're with us every game. Freeman has seen about every defensive yeah. coverage possible. I mean, they're, you know, big on big trap, you know, coming from the low side, coming from the nail, coming from the post feeder. They're, you know, digging, being physical with him. Like, they try everything uh, against him, and he just keeps right on ticking. So, you know, credit to him. I thought the second half, he was really good. There you see the pick and roll game. Great one-hand flick pass there by Castaneda to Freeman for, on the roll. Uh, right here you see it, right by the ear of Maddox. So I thought our pick and roll game was better in the second half. Cutting was better in the second half. Thought our offense overall was better. Yeah, to open up that second half, I thought uh, we're going to see Castaneda with another jumper there. I thought uh, for the first three, four minutes, he was special. He's been special a lot all year, but, boy, those two uh, off-the-dribble passes, then a drive to the hoop, he did a little bit of everything. Yeah, great pass there by Clark on the pick-and-roll game. Pick-and-roll game was really good in the second half. Much better. I thought we saw the roller better, read situations and helped defenders better. Great uh, pitch ahead there by Tavari Johnson to Freeman for the rim run score. Great pick and roll again. So you can see a lot of these pick and roll clips, Joe, were in the second half. We're up 47-27, and then uh, with about 12 minutes to go, you call a timeout. They make a little run trying to turn things around. You called a good timeout, I thought. Yeah, I tried to obviously try to create a stoppage in their momentum, but, you know, we, uh, and we, we, did all, we didn't finish this one great either the last couple minutes. I thought we, you know, they made scored a couple baskets on some defensive mistakes. I thought we... We're in position to win the game by 20-plus, quite honestly. End up winning by 17. But we did a lot of good things. And, again, on a day where, you know, we had a lot of emotion and we're missing a key starter and Greg. And, you know, I thought some guys, again, especially the bench, you see Tavari make another three there. I thought especially him and Clark really stepped up for us. Mentioned after the game, Coach, only five turnovers. You've been good on turnovers all season long, but only five Saturday night. Yeah, the great play there by Hunter. Uh, on the drive there for the dunk. But, yes, we've been very good, one of the better teams in the country and certainly our league and taking good care of the ball, and good teams do that. So you don't want to uh, shoot yourself in the foot. Um, I thought that uh, our ball placement there on that drive, for example, was really good. Nate does a good job of finishing through the contact. I talked to Nate after the game on the radio side, and I asked him about that dunk by Sammy Hunter. He said that was a 10. That yeah, 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 no, he uh, he had a great, uh, great finish there on the drive. Great finish on the drive. 
Zips win it 81-64 for win number 20 on the season. That's always a goal. I know you want to win the league and you want to make a long tournament run, but that, that 20 win is pretty good every no, year. No, it's hard to do that. You know, yeah. Charles texts me after the game, you know, it is. And he reminded me of that. It is. It's challenging, you know. Uh, these other teams are coached, too. They're trying to yeah. win, too. So, you know, credit to our guys. Um, their buy-in's been really good. Yeah. You know, I still think we got some things we need to clean up here as we f start to finish the last week of the regular yeah. season uh, and head into March. We're going to take a break and back and announce our Players of the Week right after this, so don't go away. The difference with Wentz Financial Group is that we do not have a cookie-cutter answer to any of our clients' needs. Every day is completely different in the market, and every client situation is unique. We value the opportunity and responsibility to manage the hopes and dreams of our 3,000 customers nationwide. Come see the difference Wentz Financial Group can make for your financial future. Wentz Financial Group, investment management for your lifetime. It takes attention to detail. With your local Bryant dealer, you're getting more than just a technician. You're getting someone who pays attention to your needs and the little things that make a big difference. It takes the dealer you can rely on. And to keep your family warm this winter, here in the show how this works. It takes Bryant. Bryant. Whatever it takes. And to keep your family comfortable, it takes E.H. Roberts Heating and Cooling. Find them at ehroberts.com. Okay, welcome back to Zips Weekly. Each week we announce our Players of the Week, brought to you by the Wentz Financial Group. And this week we have one Player of the Week. The last few weeks we've had co-Players of the Week. This week it goes to 6'7 Jr. Enrique Freeman. Another solid week. Coach, he was 14 of 19 from the field last week, only missing five shots. Uh, really continues to pass the ball well out of the double team. You mentioned he's seeing every type of defense possible, but he's seeing the floor so well right now. He really is. Um, I thought he was really good all week. I thought he was the one consistent bright spot at yeah. Toledo. And then obviously 17 and 10 against Western, where he yeah. really got it cranking in the second half. Um, you know, I th he's just tremendous, you know. Feel blessed to have an opportunity to coach, you know, to coach him, and and uh, he's just such a great kid, teammate, leader, student, player, heart worker. I mean, he's he's uh, special. So you know, it's uh, been a real blessing to have him in our program, and and uh, continuing to work with him. I think he's got an even higher ceiling. Oh, I yeah. think the next step for him, Joe, as we approach next year, is for him to shoot threes you guys asked me after the game last night I expected him to shoot that ball and he turned it down yeah and you could hear the crowd almost I go mean, ooh, you know I wanted, I wanted to shoot it yeah. you know so but uh, we'll continue to work with him and continue to work on you know his body continue to work on the three-point shot he's now seen double teams all year right you know so he's continuing to evolve he's taken a step each year he's been with us and gotten better we talked about that last night the yeah. satisfaction of seeing that that's right with guys and so, uh, you know, he'll take another jump. He does so many things so well, but Coach his has excellent timing, and he gets off his feet as quick as anybody in the league. He does, um, and he affects both ends of the floor with his defensive rebounding, shot blocking on the defensive end, length and ability to move, offensively, offensive rebound, low post scoring, a passing yep. and assist. And, you know, again, that next thing, he's comfortable on the perimeter, as you've seen, Joe, sure. driving it from there. Oh, yeah. He can drive from there and pass from there. The next step is feeling great about that three-point shot, which, you know, the starting point is that I do as the coach. So I wanted to, you know, take the, the open ones. Sure. Player on the rise, how about 5'11 freshman Tavari Johnson from LaGrange, Illinois, Lions Township High School. Had one of his best games in a zip uniform Saturday night against Western Michigan. Came off the bench to play 22 minutes, nine points, dished out three assists, four rebounds, two steals. But the one thing I noticed, Coach, and the one thing you demand from your players he played very good on the ball defense. Yeah, it was the best he's defended, you know, in, in some time. And we've been really urging him to do that. Tavares going to figure it out on the offensive end. He's too talented. And then you see there, Joe, even at 5'11", he's pretty long for yeah. a guy 5'11". So he gets his hands on a lot of, on a lot of balls, a lot of deflection, steals, and uh, is a shot maker, playmaker, and pick and rolls. You know, once again, I'm excited to continue to work with Tabari, no different than we are with Enrique, and keep getting him to take yeah. the next steps. And we talked to you after the game Saturday about how Nate Johnson has progressed from one year to the next. I expect a big jump from Tavari. 
I think so year. with his body, his knowledge now. Yeah. You know, it's one thing to tell an 18-year-old freshman that you're playing against 22- and 23-year-olds and they're physically strong. Yeah. And I think they, they believe you. And then you get out there and you fill an arm bar that a guy puts on yeah. you. And he's been lifting weights in college for five years. He's a, you know, that's a, that's a different uh, beast. Yeah. And so I think he's felt that. Um, Got to make a commitment there. That's a big step for him. Uh, commitment to the defensive end. Continue to improve shot making, yep. uh, which he already has a gift there. Pick and roll play, he's good there. I think he's got a chance to be a really good player for us. Both Johnsons, both Tavari and Nate. Yeah, yeah it's going to be fun to watch them progress in the next two or three years. We're going to take a break. When we come back, as we said, the final week of college basketball. Tuesday night at home, the Zips against Ball State. Friday night against Kent State. We're going to come back and talk about those two games right after this. The difference with Wentz Financial Group is that we did not have a cookie cutter answer to any of our clients' needs. Every day is completely different in the market and every client situation is unique. We value the opportunity and responsibility to manage the hopes and dreams of our 3,000 customers nationwide. Come see the difference Wentz Financial Group can make for your financial future. Wentz Financial Group, investment management for your lifetime. At the University of Akron, you have opportunity. Opportunity to be transformed through learning in our more than 200 in-demand degree programs. Opportunity to gain lifelong talents in the classroom, the studio, the lab, and in the community. And the opportunity to be a leader because of those who will support you here. At the University of Akron, you'll find your opportunity to reach greater heights. Here, everyone rises. Welcome back to Zips Weekly. Now it's time for our scouting report brought to you each week by the Hilton Akron Fairlawn Hotel. Tuesday night, the final home game of the season. It's senior night, Coach, and that's always tough because you say goodbye to a couple guys you get very close to over the years. Yeah, fortunately, we've got uh, more games after that, but yeah. you're right. I mean, uh, obviously, Hankerson's been a tremendous addition for us. Um, I always tell him and his family, I wish I would have had him for more sure. than one year. And I, I think, think he wishes that too. He'd, make, he'd make another, you know, yeah. another jump. Um, and then obviously Castaneda, it's just been a real privilege to coach him. Love his competitive toughness. Um, I think he brings that out in our team. Uh, more through example, but this year even more with his voice. And so he's, uh, you know, really those guys do a great job of students, leading, teammates, mm -hmm. very similar to all the characteristics I mentioned earlier relative to Enrique Freeman. Ball State, as we said, comes to town Tuesday night, one of the best teams in the league. First-year coach Michael Lewis has come into Muncie, coach, and kind of turned that thing around. They're He's really done a good. great job. Obviously, they returned a ton, and then they brought Coleman back from Missouri, yeah. who originally started at Ball State. So they've got a very good roster, very good players, good shooting, good perimeter play, good guard play, and then Sparks inside is an yeah. absolute load. Didn't play uh, here in the loss to Eastern Michigan. Yeah. Uh, will he play Tuesday night? You don't know. We're going to prepare like he is. Zips lost 70-63 uh, to 63 January 6th over in Muncie, but we didn't have Castaneda, and we were leading at the half by a point. Yeah, no, we were leading late with about five minutes yeah. to go. I watched it uh, here, obviously, after our game uh, against Western, and, and um, you know, we were right there to win it. I thought our younger guys stepped up. Yeah. They made a lot of mistakes, but they got thrown in the fire. They National did. TV game at Ball State, 20-win team. We were right there, up five uh, late in the game and just didn't close. Yep. And the Zips will close out the regular season Friday night. Remember, that'll be a 6 o'clock tip-off. They moved that up. National TV audience, the renewal of the best mid-major rivalry, I think, in the country. Akron and Kent State. Again, Coach, it'll be emotional and it'll be fun to coach in and play in. Always is. Yeah. Kent Akron, that's all that needs to be said. That's right. Exactly. They're a good basketball team. They're 23-6. and six. And, of course, we'll see the same cast of characters, Sincere Carey, Malik Jacobs, two of the best backcourt combinations in the league. Yeah, they are. I mean, those two guys are a load. They're, they're uh, guys that really are competitive, um, really, really competitive, um, make plays for their team, yep. uh, really good defensively. They're both two-way guys, yep. and they've got other really good players around them. They do really good, and they're very well coached. Yep. So. Uh, it'll be a challenging game, but we got the Ball State game first. That's and we're right. going to take it one game at a time right now. Well, Coach, finish strong. Hopefully we'll talk about two more wins next week, plus the Mid-American Conference Tournament. For Head Coach John Gross, I'm Joe Dunn. Always remember, we'll see you back here next week, and go Zips. Thanks for watching Zips Weekly with John Gross. 
presented by Akron Athletics and the Wentz Financial Group. Have a great rest of your day, and as always, go Zips! This has been a presentation from Learfield IMG College.